Facts. All in the jungle with it, I'm never gonna fumble with it Embracing the haters because I know that the love is hitting I'm focused, I'm tunnel vision like watching the funnel Spending no time to rebuttal, niggas, you probably should huddle quicker Cause this be your last drive and my defense ain't subtle, nigga Hey, what's up, man? J Thrash, we is back again with another one I appreciate everybody subscribing to the channel We almost to that thousand We a little bit over a hundred away to that thousand I said by February 28th we was going to have that thing. I know we're going to get away before then, though. So like and subscribe to the channel if you if you like the positive content, the messages that I'm getting out. You know what I'm saying? And drop a comment below on any of the videos. Your opinions, thoughts, if you agree, disagree, we're here to talk about it. You feel what I'm saying? We're going to talk about it with some power. This is a topic I've been wanting to speak about, like, a lot. And I just, you know, take my time with it because I'm still going through it. So a lot of y'all know I have my second son, full custody. For, one, for those who didn't know, I got my second son full custody. And just having him every single day, um, you know, interacting. And, you, yo, fathers are, and we all know this already, but fathers are so important in their son's lives and the daughter's lives. But I'm specifically speaking about the, the, the boys that are growing up. It's so important that I'm here for him right now. And, and I, I see it every day, like the consistency that he is seeing from me, whether it's good, like, on you know, applauding him when he do good or correcting him when he when he messing up. The consistency is everything. And I, I see it in my son. And it, it just always had me think about like, um, you know, the result, the results of me not having a consistent father in my life. My mom was only able to teach me so much you know because she just she's a woman and and she got everything she got the weight of the world on her shoulders you know what i'm saying because you know our black women are strong you know my, my mom is a strong woman strong individual but there's only so much that she can you know what i'm saying teach me a lot of things i i gotta learn from or i should have you know what i'm saying learned from a man but i end up learning it just growing up you know what i'm saying <clears throat> being in the streets whatever end up growing up you learn you learn stuff on your own but there was a certain point in my life where I started making decisions on my own because before that of course my mom making all the decisions for me but it was a certain point where I'm starting to make my own decisions and some of my decisions my mom only gonna be able to agree or disagree you know what I'm saying and then give her perspective or her viewpoint on it from a woman's side I I never really got that the male perspective on a lot of decisions I made or or even had somebody to ask about it so I, I take all of that into consideration you know what I'm saying and I think about every, a lot not every single time but I think about a lot of those times where I might have made a bad decision and, and it really was a result of me not even being able to find nobody to talk to or ask about it because it, I wasn't comfortable enough and when I think about that the first thing I do is go talk to my son because the communication I didn't have growing up with a male figure like that to where I felt like I could just open up. I didn't have that 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 line of communication. You know what I'm saying? So it was hard for me to even express how I'm feeling or the decisions I'm planning on making. It was hard for me to even tell anybody, you know? And it, it, it's just anything, just uh just street wise, uh relationship wise, job wise, anything, really. Really, so me not being able to have that 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 male role or my father in my life really did take a a toll in some good ways and some bad ways on the decisions I I decided to make. Being aware that I lacked from not having a father figure is what helps me with my son. Like I it, like self awareness is everything. So when I think about what my son could possibly be going through is because I think about what I went through without having a father. So it actually helps me out and being a better father and wanting to do better than what I'd never seen growing up. I only had my mom growing up and she, as much as she could be, tried to be the mom and the dad, but I just still look at her like my, my mom, my, my super mom, you know what I'm saying? So I never had a super dad. So that gives me the, the will now today to want to be that super dad for my son you know and break the cycle you know and bring you know break them chains because i don't want my son to feel like how i felt growing up like all those times when i was younger and i you know 
whether it be a movie or anything, I would see other kids with their dads. And back then, I'm like, dang, man, I wish I, you know what I'm saying? I wish I knew my dad. I wish my dad was alive. And, you know what I'm saying? I wish nobody killed my dad. Like, I want to be at these basketball games. I want to be shooting ball with my, with my, my dad. You know what I'm saying? Playing football with my dad, basketball with my dad, baseball with my dad. And a lot of time when I see those connections with other folk and they, with other, you know what I'm saying, guys and they dad, yo, it used to hurt a little bit. I look at LeBron James as like a perfect example of what I'm talking about. The man is actively in his children's lives, regardless of his busy schedule and being a basketball player, going from state to state, city to city, all you know, half the year. I look at him as a prime example of the type of dad that we all should aspire to be. No matter what we got going on in our personal lives, we still put our children first. He still put his children first all the way to the point where he actually wants to play with his son in the NBA. And it, and it's going to I think it's going to happen. Who do you want to play with? Ronnie is number one on my fucking list. That's dope. He's number one on my list that I want to play with for you sure. You want him to beat you? You think? No, nah, he can't beat me. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Ronnie. No. Nah. Beat your dad. <laughs> Not too long ago. I said, um, I asked him, I said, you want to, what you want to do with this? Like, like you want to get to the pros? What you want to do? He's like, yeah. I said, why? He said, because I want to make a name for myself. I was like, Legendary. that's the bigger motivator than money. What you going to say to that? Nothing. I said, I said, well, let's, let's fucking get it. Let's get it. Let's get it. It's going to happen. But just even, not even on that large of a scale, just being in his kids' lives and you get to see it. You know what I'm saying? Like, this is something that need to be, like, if we... We do glorify it. Like, it should be glorified more than when we talk about, like, you know, the deadbeats of the world and stuff like that. Like, we have a lot of great examples of, of, of dads who are actively in their children's lives. It just don't come off like that because the masses of people is fucked up. You know what I'm saying? It is, it is what it is. But even as an adult looking at LeBron interact with his kids, I still think, and I'm almost 30 years old, I still think about my dad. And be like, dang, man. Like, I would have been dope if I'd have had that. And I think about where I would have been or where I could have possibly have been, you know what I'm saying, back then if he was alive or around, you know? And soon as I, like, as soon as I think about that, I, I, I go straight talk to go talk to my son and, and do something with my son. Because I, I promise you, like, every time I have those feelings or think about it, I have to go see and do something with my son or talk to him or something because those are all the same times that I didn't have that. So being a reassuring factor in his life in every aspect is my goal. And I need him to know that I love him unconditionally. You know what I'm saying? And I, and I need him to know that he can come to me about anything. He will never be able to, or never want to feel like he has to hide anything from me. That's what I'm, that's what we're working on right now. I try to make the most of, every single moment with him because growing up I didn't have those moments with my with my dad my mom got married to somebody else that's my my brother and sister's dad he got she got married on that that wasn't my dad I still never had those connections with him and I probably to a certain extent used to look at him like yo why we don't be like you know like you ain't no real dad to me you know what I'm saying to me you ain't like, like you know and it's because he really wasn't my dad and also another thing that I um, I'm learning right now, and it's so beneficial on both sides, um, for him and for me. Like, I'm teaching him patience by by having patience with him. I'm actually learning how to have patience because, you know, I just got him last year, you know, full-time, full custody. So that's, that's a, for all the women out there, y'all know how it is. So that's a different level of focus that I, I have to give, I give my son now, you know. So there's a, a different level of dedication that I have to give him. So... Sometimes it can be trying, frustrating, and, you know, we all don't respond the right way every single time we're parents. But what we have to do is try to find the most constructive way to respond to our children when they're acting out or, you know, because for the, for the most part, they don't really respond to the yelling like that. It's kind of hard. Like, my mom used to yell at me when, I, when we was young. Now, whatever she was saying is whatever she was saying. She, she was right about what she was saying. Whatever I did, I was wrong about it, right? But she yelling at me. So <clears throat> a part of me is scared. I'm not trying to get whooped. These harsh, strong words that she using in this, this, this voice right now, I know this is a company with a uh, ass whooping. 
And I don't want that. So that's all I'm waiting on. And that's all I'm ready for. So I can run, do whatever. I didn't miss the whole point of why I even might get ass whooping. I didn't miss her whole message to me. You know what I'm saying? So that was really never conducive for me. He's literally the same. My son is literally the same exact way with me. I had to understand that and realize that like, like, yo, this is literally your seed. Think like your, think like the younger you. Now I have to think about how I went about things and how things made me feel. It take a level of uh, a certain level of self awareness to be able to assess those situations back then and get a, a constructive conclusion or a constructive way to correlate that to your your kid's life today. We have to break these curses or, or these traumatic curses that we got. We have to start somewhere. So I'm actively you know, trying not to do the things. Shout out to my mama, though. Boy, that's, boy she, she yelled because that's what she had to do. She felt like that's what she had to do. She yelled and whooped. Now, if I, it was a father around, if my dad was around, maybe she wouldn't have been yelling and all that. Maybe she wouldn't have had to be the one to try to instill the fear in me. It might have been my pops. So these are things that I think about. I think about this stuff all the time, and it really only make me a, a better person just trying to be patient with him because I'm only stern when I have to be with him. Because a kid is still going to be a kid. We all still got to realize that. And we all got to realize, too, that we have bad days, too. But we don't want to take it out on our children. So we got to learn that patience. And, and me learning that, he sees it now. He, he's, car he's starting to come around. He's starting to see the patience that I have. At first, he know when he get in trouble. The voice getting stern all the time or loud all the time or might yell. So it would scare him. He would shy away to where we can't even get to the bottom of this because he's, too, he's even too scared to talk. So I have to take a, a different approach and be a little more calm. All these things I would have never learned or would have never knew until I like really got my son like full custody. I just wanted to say that to say it's so important to be in your child's lives. Brothers, fathers, we have to be in our children's lives. They need us more than they know. And they need us more. You need them more than you know. As much as he need me, I need him. I would have never been able to even um, test out or try to have this level of patience if it wasn't for my me having my son full custody. And, you know, not every man is going to have their kids full custody. You know, situations are different everywhere. But the consistency is the key. They just need to see that we're there at all times. You know, they need to see that we're there when we're supposed to be there. And then we're supposed to be there when we ain't supposed to be there, when they think we ain't supposed to be there. That's what I needed as a kid, and I didn't get that. So I made decisions that might not have been the best, but I learned from it, and I promised to not let my son make those same decisions. He's still going to be able to make his own choices, but what I'm instilling and in, in he's, he's learning is that every choice comes with a consequence, and you have to understand that every consequence is different. He's starting to learn how to make better decisions because we got to keep it real. There's some grown men out here in life right now. I mean, you're not, not making good decisions because they might not have had somebody when they was five. Like my son is about to be six. They might not have had nobody this young telling them about good decisions and bad decisions. They're just making their own decisions, you know? And, and for whatever reason it is, you know, but a lot of us ain't grow up with no pops. So at a certain age, we're going to start making our own decisions. Who the fuck going to be able to tell me what? Yeah, my dude's going to be yelling and doing all that. But after a while, it just be, it just be yells. But if you had your pops in your life and he, was, and he really wanted to get on your ass, yeah, you would probably have a little fear in you. Yeah, you got to, you got to answer the pops for the, for the wrong stuff you're doing, for the bad choices you're making. You know, this stuff I'm trying to instill in him because this is going to go and, and follow him into real life. When he get out there on his own, and I ain't going to be able to protect him. He got to make good decisions, you know. So I'm just thankful that I'm able to be as present and consistent as I am with my son and I just wanted to share that with whoever might need to hear that man uh y'all tell me what y'all think about that in the comments thank y'all for subscribing to the channel share this with a friend man somebody who you know might be going through this or you know what I'm saying going through anything with their children in any capacity share this with them y'all stay safe stay easy stay protected get the folk out your circle that ain't supposed to be in your circle it's easier said than done but it's definitely doable I'm gone